They have the decision to make on quickly October 23rd for the contract extension. What do you think happens there? You think they get it done or does quickly roll into the summer as a restricted free agent? Well, I hope, I hope they can get something done because I think quickly so valuable. You know, I mean, he proved it last year how valuable he is. And and I, so, you know, you start with that. Um, but I'm going to take it from a business standpoint, right? Because there's, there's a, from the team side, you, you hope because you love the way he fits. You love that, you know, if you need him to start, he can in a pinch and he's done it very well. In fact, he can start either position. He can play point. He can start at the off guard. He can do it all. Like, I think he's got that kind of Swiss army knife versatility and value. And he was runner up for six man of the year. Yeah. And you could argue between he and Brogdon, like, you know, his he had serious impact on a 47 win team. Now, let me go from the other side. And I always do this when I was a writer, I used to do the same thing. You know, you talk to the team and you get their side of it, then you go to the agent and you get his side of it. Because you got to understand both perspectives. So I want fans to understand the business side. If you're Emmanuel quickly, do you bet on yourself this year? Do you think to yourself, okay, you know, everybody's throwing out the $80, $80 million number, right? And, you know, because, like, Peyton Pritchard was taken 26th, one after quick. Mm -hmm. Peyton Pritchard signed for $30 million, right, over three years, I think. And Uh, then you're seeing other contracts. Yeah, you you see Devin Vassell, $137 million. Mm -hmm. He was taken a lot higher, of course. He was a lottery pick. But same draft. And so you're looking, all right, that's 27 a year. So there's 10, and then there's 27 a year. Where does he fall? Does he fall in the middle or does he fall closer to Vassell? And if you're his agents, are you saying to yourself, this team has Jalen Brunson. This is, There's a glass ceiling for quick on this team. Jalen's not going anywhere. I mean, Jalen is the face of this franchise. I mean, he is a critical piece. The fans love him. He's a starting point guard. He should be an all-star. So there's a ceiling on quick and what he can do. And if you think you are good enough to be an NBA starter, and he has played a lot of games, he started a lot of games last year, and his starting numbers, if you look at them, are phenomenal. Yeah. If I'm an agent, I'm kind of thinking restricted free agency might not be a bad thing because the worst thing that will happen is the Knicks will match another team's offer, and you'll still get the money you want. Now, you won't get the role that maybe you think he can grow into, which is a starting point guard, Mm -hmm. not not as long as Jalen Brunson's here. Mm -hmm. But at least you got the money and you're still where you love to be. You know Tibbs loves him. The fan base loves him. Like, it's the worst thing that can can happen is you get money you think you're owed, you're, you're worth on the open market, and you get to be in a place you love that loves you. The other thing that can happen is the Knicks could say, well, we've got Brunson already at a discount. Eventually going to have to pay him what a real starter starting point guard gets of his caliber. And I don't know if I want to invest more than 20 a year on my backup point guard. So you might have to say whatever another team might come in and offer sheet. You might say that's that goes beyond what we're going to we're willing to pay. Now, I'd be surprised. The Knicks are normally a franchise that does not blush when it comes to paying a player what he's worth. But that's something that if I'm the agent, I'd rather test that. But that's betting on yourself in one year. Have another great year and then go into restricted free agency with the worst thing that happens is you stay where you're loved and where you love to be. But you never know what team out there that needs a point guard, a young team that knows we need a guy like that, that might be willing to throw some more shekels on and give you a little bit more than what, perhaps you can make here in, in New York. So I'm really curious to see what yeah. the what the approach is going to be from Quickly's side. I have no doubt in my mind the Knicks side wants them. Yeah. They want. Them. But I wonder if the if Quickly's business side is saying, let's see what the market says you are. And let's mm-hmm. see if you want to be a starter in this league, you might have to go somewhere else to do it. Yeah, it's it's fascinating, man, because they absolutely need him. You're right. I mean, you look at the way that bench unit looks with without quick. This is a different team. But I'm wondering yeah. if he and his camp is thinking, does it get any better than it did last year? I mean, finishing second in the six man of the year race, you had opportunities to start. Now this year, it's a brand new season. You bring in DiVincenzo. Who's to say Grimes doesn't take another step up where you're Mr. Fourth Quarter role? Uh, and we know Chibs has trusted him. He's that's his go-to guy. 
probably the most well-rounded mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. three younger mm -hmm. players between he, RJ, yeah. right? Trust him. He, you tr he trusts mm -hmm. him. But he, now you have the Vincenzo in here, and so the rotation gets a little muddy. I wonder if Quicks Camp is saying, you know, does it get any better than it did last year? And do we take whatever the Knicks are gonna gonna offer here rather than test the market if he doesn't get the exposure that he got last year? Plus plus the playoff I know, understand disaster that. against Miami. Yeah. I understand that thinking. I'm telling you from when when I've talked to agents, they never think that way. Mm. They not about a young player who's who's like you always take a young player and you see them, right? That you see them trending up and you believe, oh, there's still more. There's still more. Because look what you did as a starter in limited starts. What if you went to this team and started with those guys? And you had the ball in your hands and you were more the focal point. You're like, just look what you could do when you're the focal point. Look what you can do, right? Like, so you always believe your client has another step, another level in them. It's only when the player gets to a certain point where they, like later in the career, where it's like kind of you know what they are, then you start realizing this is your slot. You're going to be in this slot. We're just going to make sure we keep getting you your money where you're slotted. That's what an agent thinks. But when you're coming off a rookie deal for a player that gets better every year, and last year was his best year so far, an agent always believes you're ready to take another, another step. And why, again, I'm, I got this mindset is based on conversations that I've had with agents and how they play things. And this is not, I'm not very quick these agents. I mean like all agents. This is how they, th that they think. But also looking at this Knicks team. The prevailing belief around sports media, NBA media, is that this is a team that's going to, remember last year the Knicks were picked to be a play-in team. Yeah, yeah. Now they're, now they're like, this is a 45 to 50 win team. This is a team that definitely top five in the East, you know, could push in the top four. Well, if they're going to do all that, that means quickly is probably going to have a big role in it. Once again, already looked at because of last year's voting as one of the best six men in the league. So if you already have that reputation, the Knicks have a good bench. They've got good depth led by Emmanuel quickly. Those are important phrases that you have attached to your player. And now the team's expected to be better or, or, you know, like they were last year, take that step. They're going to be a good team, very competitive team. Be on national TV a lot this season. As an agent, you're looking at that like, this is a great opportunity for us. Mm. You're going to be worth so much. There's going to be teams watching that are going to say, I want that guy on my team. And that's when you'll see what kind of offer sheets come in. And as I said, the play is the worst thing that happens is he gets to – he stays where he's loved and where he – but it doesn't mean that you don't, as an agent, say you, you, you should explore what other options and opportunities are out there mm. because Jalen Brunson is sort of the glass ceiling for you becoming a full-time starter here in New York. We'll see. Yeah, I could be yeah. totally wrong, and he could say, I don't care about all that. I love it here in New York. Uh, the Knicks say, we love you. How much do you think you're worth? Boom, sign on the dotted line. Five mm. o'clock on Monday, this is a mood point, right? Could be, and I hope so because I love the kid. But I'm just talking about it from a business perspective, just something for everybody to think about as this plays out, not to get too rattled by it, mm. to understand it's that's that's the thinking. It's not, oh, he didn't sign. Oh, they don't want him. They couldn't sign him. Or he doesn't want to be here. He wouldn't sign. No, it ain't like that. This is a business, this is a business decision because of Brunson's presence. Mm. And it's like a glass ceiling for quickly. Sure. Everywhere else, he could have a starting opportunity, but we all know here this is Jalen's role. Jalen's position.